When did the moral compass? Because obviously, graffiti there is this fine line of a moral compass. At what point? Yeah. When when is that tipping it's, for you? It's very fine. Yeah. Very fine. For sure. Um, you can find yourself in predicaments where Com- you're compromised. You don't agree with what's going on, but you're there. It's already happened. Um, <laughs> can you give me an example of that without using any names, X and Y? The one that comes to mind, I don't. I've, I probably shouldn't even say. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official You need the Television app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Yo, NolanPolandRecords.com for underground classic. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast. <laughs> Transmitting live, central London, as central as you need to be, want to be, deserve to be, don't want to be anywhere else, you know what it is. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight to all the regulars. Big shout out to Nolan Poland, um, records.com, big shout out to strainstation.co.uk. Um, big rest in peace to Philip Shabwell um, and all the family, and of course, Mepha, rest in peace, Mepha, recently died uh, just before we started recording this. Sharing is Kerry Newell. It is a television app free download. iPhone, Android for your sins. Serves you right. Street culture, sports specifically. Inside the house today, without question, somebody that I was most definitely influenced by. This guy was everywhere, everywhere on track uh, from South London upwards. KTO's finest. And if you know about South London, get to know this guy, the mighty Dame inside the place. Oh, on. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Just getting by, you know. Getting by, getting on, getting up with it. <laughs> getting we did on, getting a... old, and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's for sure. We uh, we kind of broke some ice uh, just across the road at the local. Um, it's good to have you over here. Thanks. It's nice to be here. Yeah. Like it's been a while. I've been watching all your other ones and thinking, when am I going to come? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, because I uh, big up vids, of course. Um... Everybody else that I've seen on there, that like vids, Yonda, Print, Char, there's been a bunch of people on here and I'm like well, when do I get my when do I get this yeah. brother it's the door is always open tea the in the pot drinks in the, the fridge blessing <laughs> yeah uh, and you were just saying actually because uh, for those of you who are listening and not watching uh, I do have an array of uh, um, architectural like old school bits and bobs on the wall and you point towards the uh, K, uh, the Iron K right there and how, how much of a fan you were following his bits and bobs as yeah that? so uh, this is like after I've stopped doing graffiti and that but I was I was a multi-drop de- delivery driver and I'd be going around the city seeing all of these like shop shutters mm. with alphabet letters and I was trying to on my phone to get the whole alphabet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how far did you get? Um, half of it. <laughs> I, haven't got the, I haven't got the phone no more. So You know what I love about that story? It, it, it just off the jump is the passion for graph that graph writers have even after they... It doesn't leave. It never it, leaves, it, it won't it? leave. Like, no. It can't leave. It's, yeah. it's also like a source of creativity that's... It's just part of us, really. Mm. Like We probably wasn't allowed to express ourselves as we wanted to creatively in school. Mm. And we end up with to be rebels without a cause and then mm. started turning into artists, mm. street artists. Street art. Not vandals, no. But I'm, yeah. not, like, I'm not a street artist, but I mean, that's what it kind of evolves into over time. And it's, it was good to see the growth. Yeah, it's almost like it's... T- right, hit, okay, spicy, okay, comment below. The t- toleration for graffiti, because obviously when we think, when I think of Dame at least, and for those outside of the UK or in you know further reaches of London, Dame, KTO, I mean, we'll go through the list of other alphabets that are actually existing next to your, your n- n- notoriety of Dame of its time. You were, you were up and at them, the majority of South London, and we're talking of a time... Do you know I mean that time now feels so distant to the the, the toleration that the graph has now? Yeah, I mean we was shunned upon. We were vermin, <laughs> literal yeah. literal vermin. There was no doing street art. There wasn't like be, um, being paid. 
Mm. The, the, here and there, mm. you might get a barber shop here and there, or whatever. And there was like the FDC crew; they had a few. Sir had a few yeah. get ups where we do train stations and whatnot. But there was yeah. no real legal stuff. Mm. Everything was not above board. Mm. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. Yeah, like I said, we've had a conversation before we went on. So, um, and big up Ben. Ben's inside the house. Hold tight. Give us a blocker, blocker. Blocker, blocker. There you go. There you go. So just to know that uh, this this has been recorded to a live studio audience. <laughs> I, look, let's talk about this, man, because, you know, I think, Dame, my first thought is an obvious FDC connect or an obvious... You were never really part of that South fraternity. You didn't go out that way, contrary to what people may have first thought when seeing so, you active. I grew up, I, I was raised, I grew up in Clapham Junction. Mm. Um, Char, he was FDC, but um, he lived in the same area as me, just two minutes from where I live. We went to the same primary school. Mm. He was about four or five years older than me. Mm. And he'd be coming back from crazy nights out and spending the last five, ten minutes of his night in my estate, telling us the stories of what he'd been up to and then disappear into the night. And then... That was just intriguing. So how old were you at that time? 13, 12, 13, 14. Mm. I was just early ages in secondary school. <laughs> that didn't really last for long. Mm. But mm -hmm. I was out of secondary school by third year and fully into graph by that same year. By year nine, <sighs> yeah. So, uh, yo, because this is my year of talking now. Year nine, you must have been about four. Yeah, you were really young. Yeah, but I, I'd... Uh, I, let's say I've experienced a lot of life experience of things early ages. Like, so what, within your family? Um, just in like how... My, so my mum my mom was a single parent. She was at, at work yeah. the majority of the time. Yeah. So after I come home from school, she'd probably still be at work. I, I'll just be out in this state. And I'm just... I was outside a lot more. It's a lot's changed. Like, same with the graph, and just how... It's just social experiences now. Mm. Like... My son doesn't really go out as much as I did. Mm. Uh, he's um, around 12, 13, but I was, by that age, I was active. I was outside going on the train to the last stop to, just to see what was there. Mm. Big up Mumsy at this point, big up mother. Uh, you probably gave her a bit of a headache getting, trying to keep hold of you. Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but at the time, it didn't, it didn't feel like that. I was just yeah. a rebel with no cause. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So from that point where yeah you were you were footloose and fancy you what what how how did you get because a lot of people will be thinking to themselves well we're all a bit of a tearaway but how did you get to that point where you're just out and you're you're raising to paint all right so after not going back to school mm. right I'm, I'm now I'm in uh, I'm now just at year nine and I just don't go to school no more mm. I've done the bunking phase and mm. got to a point where mum's trying to look to put me in the some sort of centre or whatever but I still I weren't really on that I was just wandering the streets I bumped into uh, a guy that I went to school with his name's Jerome R.I.P. Sum someone KBS yeah. original Sum the original, original Sum, sum yeah. from South London mm -hmm. um, we went to the same school but we weren't really friends at school not, not like we didn't um, like we had beef or anything like that mm. it was just that we just didn't really know each other, so mm. I was more friends with his cousin. But when we met each other outside of the school area, he was like, oh, you do graffiti? I was like, yeah. That was it. Mm. it was someone with a like-minded type of thing, and that was it. We were just gone. We was, we was now, now apprentices of the game. Some lived in Putney. He had a few connections. He knew Pies. I knew Char. Big up Pies, big up Char. I knew Char in Capital Junction, mm. and because of because of that connection, now we both knew our our own older, mm. and we had our little mentor. But they was already our mentors were already friends, so the link ups were a bit mad. It was just like reunions for 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 them, but for me and some, it, it was bated breath, just listening and stuff. Yeah, we were just there and in the corner, like, oh my god, did you did you see what you just done? Or oh, did you hear what how they done that? Or do you reckon your mental state is for uh, a, a kid that age? Because, again, just being an outsider looking, you know, Joe Public, what's, what, what are the weaknesses and strengths that you'd need to be, character, characteristically as a kid, 
wanting to get involved with peers like that? Like what? Because obviously there is a there is a um what's the word uh uh what's the word for um a prospect? Yeah, you're, you're a prospect. Like they must see the. The peers must see the prospect. What's the weakness within the student? Vulnerability to um, get sent out. Or, but that, that wasn't really the case. But um, people would assume that, oh, the young G can mm. now do X, Y and Z for me and I won't get arrested. Mm. Or, but that really didn't counter for, for us. Like, we weren't really running um, like sent outs for people, mm. but... There, there's the areas where you could be vulnerable when you look up to someone and they will take advantage of that. Mm. And um, I mean, it sounds bad to say it, but I mean, I had plenty of them myself. I had people that would, would give me some sort of state of, of fame, which mm. I didn't really feel like I had, but I would use it to my advantage and, right. and not go in a shop. Well, I wouldn't go in the shop because I couldn't, I'm banned from it, but mm. <laughs> I would say these tins are there or this is there, go in there, get that, and then you can come painting with me. Like, <laughs> mm. Even if they didn't carry on doing graph, it was just the... They're just trying to get a status and yeah. trying to be able to, like... And um, with me, I feel like I didn't have to not really work, work for it. It was just where I was situated in, uh, in London, Clapham Junction South, and, like, just how I was as a person... Mm. Um, just made me go through, cut through quite quite finely, basically. I've, I've got... Because of your, cause your geographical position, because, the, what, you had entry points to certain things, you knew the landscape, you knew the... Well, Clapham Junction was, was the busiest train station in the whole, down, of, whole yeah. of England at one point or some point. Yeah. I'm not sure if it is right now, but it was a hub mm. where you can go anywhere, you can get to North London, yeah. Yeah. West London anywhere from there mm. like so people would always just um what's the word be attracted they're flocked frequent. They're flo yeah frequently flock to yeah. the area yeah. there was like i said char lived in the area yeah. he had his own status already so he would be coming to the, like back home with a bunch of friends that he didn't want to particularly bring outside his front door mm. because they're all fucking criminals <laughs> and um Mm -hmm. He would leave them. On, he would leave them on my estate whilst he went home to go and maybe get changed. Or so he left them with me. Hey, wait here. I'm mm. gonna go do this. La di da di da. And yeah, I suppose they all got friendly with me, and I just got involved. I was mm. into graph already, but these people being around me mm. just made it augmented it mm. like, to a level that I. I well, I don't even know what to say. Mm. Like, yeah, it's, but it's took me, it took control of my life. Big up, Vids. When did you meet Vids? When uh, did that happen? Vids, Vids FTC, he's been on a podcast before, so check that out, my guy. So, uh, I was a bit of a solo bomber at one time. Or there would be times where I would just go out on my own, and just griff, just mash up my own, own area. And uh, I met him on the track size. Really? Yeah. Does that actually happen? I have this romantic I, idea that, that you guys have got this, like, you know, these rat runs where it's like... There, there was times, like, I will, we'll get back to the vid story, but or we bumped into people on track sides on a regular basis. Like, sometimes, well, not sometimes, Christmas Day would be a mad day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking halfway up See the Ben's track. head just, like, nodding <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, walking, up, walking up <laughs> station to station Christmas Day and you see a bunch of people walking towards you but they haven't got high visits on. Mm. So you know it's, it's graphers. Mm -hmm. You bump into people at yards. You bump into people on the tracks. and That's crazy. That's you, crazy. Won't, you won't say, what are you doing here? Because you know what they're fucking <laughs> doing. <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. it. You just now, your two crews will just merge and then... Off you go. Yeah. Down the yellow brick road. Yeah, until the, <gasps> till there's no more spray in a can. Yo, that's crazy. And that's how you met. That's how you met Vids. Pretty much, not on the Christmas day. No, I met. I met. He was painting in Clapham Junction. I think he was with his friend Lines. Right. And I just bumped. I went to the same spot where he was graphing. He, he was already there, and I was like, I didn't g check him, but I was like, Yo, what you graph here? Yeah? He's like, mm. Yeah. What'd you write? He told me what he writes. Like, cool. I write this. Let's link up. 
And then... Two-headed monster emerged. Yeah. This relationship... Because you guys were like... I mean, this is through us conversation. I'm not... I'm paraphrasing here. You guys were like brothers. Still are to this day. I mean, we don't speak as much as we used to, but, like... He practically lived at my house. Uh, just because staying at my house, it was the hub. Mm. We were going to go... He lived in, like... Hack, uh, Hackbridge sides, more okay. near the Croydon sides, but where I was was more inner city. You can get to Places. Waterloo, to yeah. Victoria in an, in a, in such a quick time. Mm -hmm. So he'd stay down at my house mm -hmm. for a whole summer. It was, listen, there was one summer. He stayed at my house so much um, that his parents were planning to move, and they did. But we didn't find that out till we went back to his house to go pick up some clothes. What? We turned up at his house and it was empty. There was no one there. Yeah? Yeah. His parents... Because there was no mobile phone. Oh, yeah, you couldn't, phone you couldn't call your son and say, listen, we're moving yeah. tomorrow. You better get home. Mad. He, he missed the deadline. Yeah. And we went to his house. It was empty. No one there. We broke in. And then, because we broke in, mm. police were called. And that's how we end up finding... Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'd want to know where my NES was, my SNES, my Mega Drive, my PlayStation. I want to know where everything is. If I walked back to my bedroom, it would just been gone. Well, imagine Vitz's dad. <laughs> Vitz's dad's like, where's my son? Yeah, oh, yeah, true. <laughs> That's fair enough, yeah. Well, you, uh, yeah, but isn't like you, you lose a, you know, a puppy and hope that it might just come back? Like, this is your kid. Right, his dad Yo. moved from one part of London to a complete opposite part as well. I, I, I still to this day, you probably have to ask him, yeah, but I don't, yeah. know how, I, I don't know how we actually found out where he lived. That's an incredible story. How did you ever leave that out, Vids? That's such a critical part of the story here, that you guys actually became joint based on these life experiences. What, what do you called him? You said you did say that he was he, he was your brother. He was. Yeah, he still is my brother. Like yeah, we. You're an only child. I'm an only child. He's not. Um, he's got an older sister, but she's quite a bit older sister, or whatever. Mm. So we were just there for each other. Mm -hmm. I had there was, I had throughout the time that like. R.I.P. Sum, my guy, I said it before, but mm. he was the same thing with him. Mm. We was, like, inseparable. If wow. you saw me, you saw him. And then some kind of got evolved into, let's say, a, a, a few more serious crimes mm. and whatnot, and I weren't really... Not that I weren't interested in. Mm. I just, I don't know. I weren't really a part of it. Mm. I was still on this rebel without a cause. I just want to mm. smash a window and... Spray on it, and uh, he was like, "No, we'll smash the window. We're taking the goods, mm. <laughs> and we're actually." And then he got to, "We're taking the car. We won't even smash the window." Yeah, yeah. So uh, I kind of separated from that a little bit. He's always still my pal, but when did the moral compass? Because obviously, graffiti, there is this fine line of a moral compass. At what point? Yeah. When? When is that tipping? It's, for you? it's very fine. Yeah. Very fine. For sure. Um, you can find yourself in predicaments where. Com you're compromised. You don't agree with what's going on, but you're there. It's already happened. Um, <laughs> Can you give me an example of that without using any names, X and Y? The one that comes to mind, I don't... I've, I probably shouldn't even say, but, I mean, it just involves... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> there's a trailer sorted then. <laughs> um, but, that you're, but basically you're saying there's a lot... There's a lot of instances where your, your own um, moral... Morals would or, compromised. Yeah, it would come into be it come into question, and you wouldn't know what what was right or wrong. You just kind of went with the flow. <laughs> yeah. We Dame, were... do you feel because I I have to say, and this is why I feel quite relaxed in asking you more critical questions because you do have a moral compass. Hundred percent. Um. Uh. I was raised with manners and morals. Um. But. Just life in general will, will take its toll on someone. Mm. If um, parents split at a young mm. age, whatever, mm. it can have a, have an effect, and kids tend to rebel mm. and whatnot. And I might be a creative kid trying to rebel. I was, I would say, quite smart as a kid. Mm. There was a, a point where I was in uh, year seven, and I was, got, you know, when you like get assessed in the first year, mm. I got put into top science by year eight. Oh, right. I was in the top science group, but. I got sent out of the class every day for a whole term because I clashed with the teacher. So you know, because this isn't this isn't history, this isn't maths, this isn't English. Science is a very uh, career-defining um, 
you know, uh, study. For mm. you to get, like, top in science, that's like a, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I'd like to, um, I'm like a walking paradox, walking contradiction. Contradiction. I'm, I'm two sides of, of, of a samurai sword. Or, uh, like, both sides of me are sharp yeah. and precise, but one is the bad and one is the good. Or, yeah, yeah. And you've got to try and merge them together type thing. yeah. Is that a good analogy? It's a great uh, analogy because yeah. also you, and this is something you, you alluded to earlier um, before we switched on here, you, you're very um, mindful as a, young, as, as a young adult, but also for your age, you're, you're, um, you're Peter fucking Pan, man. <laughs> the pixelation yeah. don't do him justice. Yeah, I was put on pause. Certain <laughs> things got put on pause and some things didn't. Right? Yeah. So my mind progressed. My, uh, how I look stayed the same or, yeah. or got younger like <laughs> Benjamin Button type yeah, I don't know but um, yeah I, I think maybe it's cause just because of the life experience that I've been through at such a mm. like it's some it's either make or break yeah and I'm not a millionaire by any sorts of means but I mean it's made me into a into a stand up guy mm. I feel like a thousand percent stand up guy yeah I, I stand on my square I, I, I'm I'd like to say that I'm truthful, I'm honest, I'm like mm. I'm not I'm not the best human that you can be or whatever, but I've, like I said, I've got morals yeah. and I and I stand by them, but I might punch you in the face, I might rob you, <laughs> or <Yeah>. might of <laughs> apologies. <laughs> but it might be because how you treated me. Um I think when you're a certain age growing up, uh your responses to things are totally and utterly dictated on um, a level of confusion, emotional and confusion. And peer pressure. And peer pressure, yeah. So I'll give you a story about peer pressure. For me and some, we didn't smoke or drink alcohol at all. But we was out on our little apprentice missions with... Um, mm -hmm. We went bush bombing at Southfield's tube station. Now... I'm pretty sure it's been explained on the, on the podcast many times what bushwoman is. We're just chilling in the bush waiting for the tube to come in. And they're like five, ten minutes in between each tube. Me and some are high on adrenaline. We're just buzzing to be there. Mm. We can't wait. Are smoking weed and drinking beers. We don't do this, yeah? And we're like, mm. what is wrong with these guys? Like, mm. they're just... Um, but... After that initial thing fades out, they're like, what's that? Or oh, after we went bushwoman, what does that beer taste like then? Mm. What does that spliff taste like? Didn't taste nice, to be fair. No, no, but, no. They never do. No. But it gives you a little bit of Dutch courage. And yeah. You <laughs> and you realise... Everything's all right. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, it never tastes good to begin with. It's, uh, you don't like the taste, but it loves where it takes you. Not all the time. Not all the time. There's, there's the certain um, police stations that you don't want to go to. And yeah, and by we're on the subject, you do not try this shit at home. What we're about to talk about right now does not include EU getting involved with it, all right? That's, that's, my, that's my clause. I'll tell it like it is. Let's get some fucking stories, man. Right, so the bush bombing happens, so you discover the weed. And then, you know, because KTO, man, like... I mean, big up touch. Do you know what I mean? Big, like, big up all the crew. There's a lot of there's a lot going on here because there's a lot of names and and references. That you're not just one crew. There's a lot going on here. Let's let's start with Road. Let's start with Road. So yeah, goes later down the line, but um, we can go early if no, you want. No, no, that's fine. We can go because start somewhere. Well, yeah, yeah, nowhere. Got to start somewhere. Yeah. So I used to hang around with the Richmond bunch, the FLS lot. They weren't really. Too liked by the DDS lot, but that wasn't that was nothing to do with me. I wasn't DDS. I wasn't FLS. Mm -hmm. So I, no one can't tell me who mm. I who I can and can't hang around You're with. You're non-partial. Gash, uh, FLS. He went to my primary school as well. He moved from Junction to like Richmond Ends or whatever. But I already had a little stake in the area. Like they, I already knew someone when mm. I when I first bumped into this FLS lot who were very prolific at the time. Big time. They, they was doing every single yard known to man. A tight stay, tens. And, and tight making a bad name for themselves in against the other writers, but that's neither here nor there for me because 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're non-partial. Yeah. You were just there. Yeah. But, um, <sighs> wow, you just made me rewind. So I was already on a, a curfew. I had to be in at 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> I was in uh, Kew Gardens in a, in a petrol station around half 7, 8 o'clock at night. I was racking a munch for the night. I was planning to go to the yard. Mm-hmm. And the guy clocked what we was doing and locked the door, locked us in and called police. What? This is the night of G. Um, and we was locked in. My friend was laughing, her. He was in hysterics because I was getting a bit worried because the moment police come and ask me my name, they, I'm going to get arrested whether mm-hmm. I've got any goods on me or not. So I ran through a pane of glass what, you ran I through? I ran completely through a plane of glass. You smashed through it? Yeah. Well, I'm fucking glad I did, because if I didn't, be I would have knocked myself out. But I ran through... Yeah, all I think about is those bad TikToks <laughs> videos. <laughs> so, hold on. So, did you cut yourself and shit? No, I had a, I had a green puffer jacket on. And when I, start, oh, when I stopped running, her was behind me. He had a handful of feathers that he'd been catching what like whilst I'm running down the road there because that's that's <laughs> feathers flying. Going, Stop it! That's too much. So this is <laughs> this is before we go to G. Yeah. Uh, you ain't even got there yet. No, this we haven't got there. Yeah, this is it. yeah, this is the okay. pre the pre drinks. Then we meet up with this F- with the FLS lot. I'm trying to remember everybody. It wasn't all FLS. I was there. I think I was with this guy from Wimbledon. It wasn't really a graffiti artist. It was just more of a scallywag. Just a villain, mm-hmm. yoga. He painted quite a bit, but he still mm-hmm. the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Stay wasn't there, but we went and asked him to come. I think Nevs was there, mm. Touch was there, Blink was there. Mm. It was the most people they've touch, ever. It was the most people they've ever rested in the yard at one single time. They was proud of that. In the nineties, I don't know if it's the same now, but. People know that in, I'm not going to say the ways in and out of G, but you can try if you want. You, you're likely to get nicked. But <laughs> <laughs> we made our way in. It's quite late at night. Uh, there was trackies working on the lines, which happens at night. Mm-hmm. We, so we hid in these little alcove bits where everybody seemed anybody who's done G has hid in these alcove bits because there's dubs, there's pieces. You can't. There's no way that you can see these this graph from the tube. You have to be going to do the yard to see this graffiti it's in a, it's God, in a, that's good right? it's in between <laughs> and one of these podcasts and station mm. it's just yeah it's a minefield of graffiti that you just like it's a uh, wall of art no wall of art wall of, wall of fame wall of fame yeah. it's a wall of fame of everybody who's done that yard their trains have been cleaned by this time but you mm. know that Spo was here in 93 mm. or like, yeah, big up like, yeah. Teach was it? Like, you know they've done it. Mm, yeah, teach man. So we spent a good part of three or four hours just waiting for these trackies to disappear. They disappeared. We made our way to the trains. They disappeared, but I think they had seen us, mm. <laughs> or we tripped something. I don't know. But halfway through painting the trains, we hear "Stop, police!" What? quite loud. Stop, police! Now, any graffiti artist knows. If you hear that word, them two words, you run. <laughs> so we ran back to our uh, entrance. Yeah. Whilst running to our entrance, I trip over. You do? Yeah, I'm just we're running for my life. I trip over. There's on the tube lines and on overground lines that they worry about the third rail. On the tube, there's two electric rails. Yeah, so which ones? The, for tubes, just for because. Again, not a lot of people from the from outside of you know they're outside of UK and, and not in London. So the the tubes themselves. Yeah, there's tubes. four lines and every other line is electric. Okay. So basically, there's right. one that's not. Those are the ones that will kill you. Yeah. Okay. There's there's overground stuff as settings as well. There's there's yeah. a number of different settings. That's that's fucking I see. Yeah. You can't just rely on what we're saying here. They fucking don't get involved. Yeah. Big up them three kids that lost their lives recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah, a yeah. K bag. Yeah, trip. Um, trip and lover, and, yeah. And love, rest yeah, in peace. Rest, up, rest in peace to them yeah, guys. for real, for real. That was a sad day. Don't do I, this. I've not, I hadn't done graffiti for maybe 15 years since, or a lot, for a long time. When that news came through, for me, it was sad. It was a sad day. Mm-hmm. Three guys in one mm-hmm. time. It was, 100%. Yeah. But, um, like I said, I fell over in a diagonal fashion and landed across every single rail in a star shape. 
<laughs> um, the person behind me uh, was a boy, yeah. but the scream that he let off sounded like a girl. Like a siren. Like he was about to watch me die, and that's how, how he Bless saw him. it, and he screamed like a girl. I didn't die. Yeah. I got up, he helped me up, we carried on running. We still got arrested. We got to our exit, and there was police there yeah, yeah, waiting yeah. for us to climb over the wall. So we was trapped. Yeah, yeah. But whilst we're all being arrested, we've all accepted now we're being, we've been arrested and we're yeah. trying to get, up. get rid of our evidence. We've got, still got tins on us, paint on us. We're trying to get the paint off our fingernails and all that, because like, this is all yeah. evidence to say cause, um, that we was doing graffiti. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which we clearly was. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, in the court of law, you have, to prove, you have to be able to prove stuff. Yeah. So anyway, we're being arrested. Police officer said to me, Whatever I, uh, he handcuffed him, uh, handcuffed himself, and he said, "Whatever you do." So he handcuffed himself. He handcuffed himself, uh, handcuffed the handcuff to him, yeah. and then he said, "Before he put it on me, he said, whatever you do." So he's going to handcuff you. Yeah, we, right. right, and we're going to walk to the exit together. Right. He said, "Whatever you do, don't touch," and he pointed at the the live rails. But, but because what would what would happen? What he would be electrocuted. Along yeah, with we're you. connected by metal. Yeah. There's, he, if I fry, he fries. But, right. Okay. But I've just fallen over all of the rails. Yeah. So after he put the, the handcuff on, I looked at my friends and I said, what, this rail? And I put my... <laughs> Where I, you put your foot on the I rail? I put my foot on a rail and the policeman crumbled in his pants. <laughs> he and melted. He melted and everyone was in, in stitches. Of, oh, my it was, God. It was hella funny, but it was like also... <laughs> Life, you, yeah, there's a yeah, life yeah. and death for the police officer, but fuck him. So this became a bit of a norm of taunting because it seems to me that... that it's cat and mouse. Yeah. Cat and mouse. I get that impression. For back And again, we're talking in retrospect. This is like mid-90s business. You're saying that this was a regularity, that you would be... Our days, there was only one thing that was consistent in our days, and that would be chaos. I said this earlier, yeah. but we'd wake up in the morning and not where, know where we'd be at the end of the night. How, how do you... Listen, I've got so many questions where this is regarding, because, again, I'm just, I'm just a mild-mannered musician, artist, you know what I mean? I don't want no trouble. Doing what you do, what you did, sorry, that... Graffiti almost becomes a byproduct of what the lifestyle becomes in you. So, so there's got to be this m measure of like, man, is it, is the drama worth the graph? Good question. Very good question. Yeah. Hell yeah. And, and hell no at the same time. <laughs> right. uh, it makes a man out of you. Does it? it, it you, um, I'm hell of experienced in just... Um, just life experiences that people w won't have had, near-death experiences. People, if you grow to the age of 32 yeah. right, and you've never stubbed your toe before, your little toe, right? Yeah. If you do that at the age of 32 and it's the first time you've ever do it, yeah. Yeah, you won't know how to handle the pain. Mm. You won't know what to deal with this shit. It's mm. been so extreme for you, but mm. if you've gradually been breaking your little toe since you was two years old... Which everybody actually has done. No, but I know what you mean. It's, that's, that's a really good analogy as well because some people, yeah, some people are, you know, they went to bed as soon as something really right. life-changing yeah. happens. Yeah, so these things will have a make or break. They've broke some people mm. that I know. Uh, some people, yeah, they're not here mm. no more. They, the whole story that you hear about being dead or in jail is facts. If you get into a life of crime... There's two options. Hmm. The third option, which is an offshoot, like you can actually become a really good uh, businessman from it, and and oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah like, the hustle when you suddenly like, yeah that can that can be a possibility, but it's not likely. It's few and far between. There's only one or two people that are going to make it out hmm. of of this gauntlet hmm. in one piece, and if you do. You can see, like, look at Char at the moment. He's he's just yeah. starred in a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He's been through the shit, yeah. but it's not broke him. Yeah. It's made him. Shit blew up, fucking blew up in his face. 
and fuck up his eye. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've since the podcast that I've done with Char, I've heard so many more Which is where the endearing the, stories that, and that's crazy. That's where stories Tunnel were. Vision yeah. TV was one of the crews I was in. Mm. Not a lot of people was in that, but that's where that came from. Because so after that accident, he had tunnel vision. Hence the fucking name. Vitz told me a story about Shah, I'm going to say it. Vitz told me a story about Shah where he was muckling about on the tracks and he turned, he turned around in front of everybody and he goes, it's not a live rail, the live rail's not on. And then he goes and sticks his tongue on it and blows himself across yeah. the other side of the fucking... Shot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's fucking he shot bonkers. himself about 30 yards or something like that. We wasn't there, but he told us a story. But there's been occasions where you've seen that happen. One time I was in a yard, it was empty, the yard was like so easy to do it was just an overground yard there weren't really no to, nothing something to be uh, proud of tubes was the things that you'd be rated for but right. you go there for a little bit of practice and whatnot right. so and it's easy real easy to do and you'd never get chased out mm. so same thing you'd bump into people peace in a train mm. and you're like oh let's peace let's back yeah, here big up zeds or Zedo, I think his name was, and his brother. I can't remember his name, but yeah, bumped into him one or two times. But I'll never forget this day, painting a train and print. We've mm. had him on the podcast as well mm. before. He tried to scare us because he's finished his, uh, his thing and he was just going around bombing. Mm. Whatever. And he, he climbed under the train and tried to say boo. <laughs> but he put his hands on the live roll before he'd done that. We heard bang. He... Flew from underneath the train. Uh, it's weird because he didn't die, but <laughs> his, it, it shocked him and sh hit him. He, he hit the bottom of the train. Yeah, he flew up to the bottom of the train and, and then fell back down onto the live rail. And we we went Before to run. Gone now, yeah. We went. No, we were thought because he said boo. We thought he was going to get his wing to run. And we looked, but heard the shot kind of thing, and he was all right. And then it was all fun and games. Oh me! Oh, we played shit. with our life like it was. Yeah, Yo, and know. again, I'm saying this for the third fucking time. Don't try us at home, motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Um, and the '90s were rife in this stuff. Again, just going back to what you were saying about how writers, their um. They were personified in the media. How that they were treated feral.ly They were treated as feral. They were. They were. They... Big up. Big up. Touch. Yeah. Because he came up with the game name Scumbags. Yeah. And that's what fit. That's what fit. We were scumbags. We yeah. were scum of the earth, and we was happy to be called that. Did you enjoy that? You. You. Yes. Took... Yes. We loved it. That. We loved it. Mm. Um. And you know what. The entertainment was rife. Me, as a young buck, coming through all the different areas that led up to Victoria. I've said it before on a podcast, I was South First. And bro, like, your name, for me, I saw this train, uh, this change of, of style. It started, it started started off rudimental, as it always does. But slowly but surely, you really came to your own. Like, even your hand style just really started developing. I mean, I, I can't remember what particular year it was. I was still on the train, so we're talking about tail end of the 90s into the noughties. Yeah, man. 98, 99. Yeah, yeah, your oh. hand style was just really fucking popping and the pieces were really coming together. You know, the dubs were really coming together. I mean, we aspired to be greater. We aspired... We looked up to FDC, we looked up to DDS, but we wanted to make our own mm. mark. Mm. We, was, we knew these guys and we wasn't biting them, but we was just trying to... Listen, it's, it's the same with, with um, musicians. They find their artist that they, they, they love, they take a little piece of him, a little piece of that one, a little piece of that mm. one. So we was not style-jacking, but... Influenced. Influenced, exactly. And we was influenced a lot, but we also knew that these guys were so prolific. Mm. That that was the thing. If you're not up and out there, uh, then you're nobody. Mm. Like you might there's loads of people that had tags. But if mm. you wasn't let's take ten foot. Let's let's bring him into this mm -hmm. right. this guy undoubtedly has has destroyed everything mm -hmm. recently. Changed the whole he's recently, right? Yeah. Tox Ten foot and tox, they're not got the best pieces. That that doesn't that doesn't actually matter. No, because they're was up. up. 
yeah. and up everywhere. You, it's undeniably Tux up. Toxel C, without question. I, uh, I, I'm, right. I'm struggling to think of like, he Tox was oh, soul C. So man. undeniably up. Yeah. That's what gave you some sort of recognition. We acknowledge that. And yeah. same thing with some and the same thing with uh, vids. Yeah. We knew what it took. You just need to be prolific out there mm. and just mm -mm. smashing up the scene yeah, yeah, that yeah. you can't be denied. Undenied. And that's what happened. I, I mean, mm. I'm not, I, maybe I'm, what's the word? Not humble, but I, like, I don't think that I've uh, acquired as much fame or, or that, that I had or whatever, but people haven't forgot me. People, just last week I got sent a picture of something that I'd done in Wimbledon in like 97 maybe uh -huh. but I'm, I was chatting to this guy I was like how have you got this picture and no. in, a, in, a, in a musical sense I guess the, you're an influence a cult classic it's different to people like okay you've got your teachers of the world and you've got your diets of the world and you've got these you know the, the I mean you, the thing is as well is just to kind of segue off what I was about to say because I think this holds the, the value I'm looking for you were able to flip from different uh, peers and different associates because you weren't so prolific in one singular crew. Like you and Cos would be a, out on a mad one. And then next thing, like you're saying, like you and Vids, like... Me and Touch. Touch, Me, yeah. me and Taze. Like, I'll, Take, me all them guys. Take, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Big up Ben. Big up Ben. He's only just started painting recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, bit of a chameleon. Um, I don't want to put it down to my race, but I'd like to say I, I know how to get on with people. Or mm. if if you've got certain traits that I like, then then we're gonna get on. Good, and yeah. yeah, and it didn't matter if you was middle class or from uh, poverty. I kind of experienced both mm. in my as a child. Um, I'm a, I would like to say I'm a bit articulate, but I'm not. I'm not major. I'm not no scholar. I have no GCSE or anything like that. But I can know how to speak to people mm. in a court proposition, and I know how to speak to people in the hood. Mm. So, I found myself being friends with a bunch of different people. Mm. Some were scum of the earth, and everything, anything and everything was like crime based. Mm. Some people were middle class, their parents were still together, mm. they had, they had, they was rich, but they, they was, they was their own sort of rebel, mm. and they was more interested in, they, just, they was creatives, mm. and just being a creative is shunned upon mm. in, in society. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can only be a certain, creative to a certain point, yeah. and then your parents or the school will say, you know you've got to focus on, mm. get a job, and yeah. maybe yeah. that's what social media has played a, part in it because with Instagram like people you know the, the 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 like and love culture of posts and stuff and and the way that um people embrace technology and love um the arts they love music more they love a photography a hell of a lot more and graffiti falls into that thing everyone's a graffiti <coughs> artist now everyone's a photographer everybody's yeah. this but yeah uh, back in these days there, was, whole there was no internet there was no mobile phones no. There was pages, was <laughs> yo right, and big up take big up the, big for up the pager take. crew. Come and, on, and big up peanut because they're they're fucking yeah. hella scumbags just like me. <laughs> we, we was out there nicking as many of them as we could get. We're, what pages? Just yeah, pages, and just so we can all be in contact with each other, yeah, yeah. and and obviously for a bit of extra money. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> We, Them days, those times. If you know what a page was for back in the day, you, you definitely on a, on a We weren't drug dealings, we just wanted to, like, so back in the day, you'd have to go to Wimbledon and just hope that someone was there. If the whole crew wasn't mm. there, mm. you just had to hope someone would turn up. You might go to Wimbledon and there'd be 30 people there and then you're now on a mad mission. Or you might go there and there was, there was 30 people here five minutes ago, but now there's, just one or two guys and you're trying to you, you're asking the, what train did these guys get on mm. Mm. trying to catch up with their thing you might never ever catch up with them throughout the night but there's no social there, there was nothing in connective with anything no. so like you just had to be in the right place to like just in the place 
present. Mm, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that feels like a long time ago now when you think during about it. During a war. During a war. Uh, talk to me about White City. Let's get into that. Okay, so I went with... Uh, what's his name? We went with Sam and... To White City. He knows what he's doing. Like I said, where was the apprentices? He says... If we can't get past this tracky box, we can't paint the yard. Mm. This is on the train at White City Station. We're on the tracks, and there's trackies in this tracky box. He's pissed, not alcoholic piss, he's fuming mm. that we can't do the yard. So he starts throwing stones at the tracky box. So me and Sam copy what he's doing, monkey see, monkey do. We're mm -hmm, throwing mm -hmm. stones as well. The tracky comes out, and then we all throw stones at the tracky until we can hit him. We hit him a couple of times, and now he's definitely injured because these are fucking big stones. And then we make our way, we just leave because we can't do the yard. We leave, and then we end up doing dubs on the inside of the tube. What? Yeah, I mean, we what, had on the way home. Yeah, we had paint. The tube was empty. We're pissed off. We couldn't do the yard. Let's paint the inside of the tube. Full dubs, outlines, borders, shadows. Inside. Yeah. On, on the chairs. Was there the people windows. in there watching? No, there was no one. On, there may be in the next carriage, but we didn't give a shit. Really? Rebels with no cause. How, how quick would you, did you do it up between stations? Didn't matter. Didn't like, care. Didn't, we were so pissed off. We were just following what we were doing, really. And he's, once he started throwing up his thing, we pulled out our teams like, fuck it, let's paint as well. No way. We, yeah. We're expressing our feelings. Mm. Which, which might have been which, lacking. Lacking or might have been... Uh, built up mm. and suppressed. Certain things, we all had issues. Mm. We was, these rebel kids, rebel kids with no cause. Especially sure, like fair parenting, man. It's, not to take anything away from, because like you say, you've got a great family background. But these, um, if, if, if untapped or ignored or just not brought to the surface, it perpetuates in your day-to-day -day living, doesn't it? Yeah, if you hold in, like, stuff that's, if you suppress stuff, from out your, from yeah. your truck, like, it's going to come out in some sort of way, good or bad. And so what was the thing? What, did, what do you think the thing was for you that was... That's the breakup of my parents. Yeah. That probably was the, the catalyst. Yeah. And then moving from an area that I was comfortable in, I lived in Wimbledon. Mm. I went to private nursery. Mm. I, was, I was on the roads to be a posh kid. Mm. And then I moved to... Clapham Junction. Mm. I'm not knocking Clapham Junction because it made me who I am, but it was, yeah. it was a big uh, change in scen yeah. scenarios. Get it. So now I've got all this energy, I don't know where to put it. Yeah. Char walks into my life. How many times does your mum think you've been, like, arrested? <sighs> I mean, I've got a rap list that's quite long. Um, she lost count. Really? Yeah. I gave up lying after a while. Really? Yeah. I got arrested every day in one week before. Five, really? like a full-time job. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Every day. Is that bad luck or is that just... Yeah, I don't believe in luck in the sense of bad or good. You make your own luck in this world. Mm. And what I was doing was... Like, I pulled up at one road, one white wall one time, yeah, with this guy called Healthy. And we pulled out our pens and I'm tagging on a wall and I said to him, could you imagine if police turned up right now, how fucked we'd be? Bing! Like that. It's like I rubbed the genie and they was there. We, wow. That was one of them five days of the week. Yeah, you know that's that's, like, yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no Google Analytics to that shit. That's just like fucking... You can't make that shit up. Yeah. Like he only, he's the only witness to that. There's only one person that heard me say that, and it's him. And it happened instantly. I yo, said, he'd be my best friend from that point on. I'd be like, yo... <laughs> You know, there's simply some money around the corner here if we just, uh, you know, bide our time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, look, I think we all have those things that define moments in, in our lives. For sure, like, if you're getting bagged, like, every fucking night, that's some definitely character-building shit, right? Yeah, but we didn't give a shit. Didn't care. We didn't care. Didn't care. Did not have a care in the world. I got, I got arrested. Uh, they got, my house got raided. They had all the evidence in the world to put me to, for me to be guilty. I had to plead guilty because there was no way mm. around it. Mm. I got sent to jail 
but my mum appealed against my case. So I was out within four days. Wow. wow. Four, four days of not going to the toilet and four days of not eating, yeah? Because <laughs> if you go to jail, you're gonna, you'll realise that the food... And everything's well, it's not, bad. Well, yeah, it's terrible, but it's not the same. You know what I'm saying? So I weren't eating, so I weren't going to the toilet. But I mean, it's only doors yet. I mean, still got the rest of my life to live, but I've never been in jail yet. I wasn't. Like, what's I, what's, I, it, what's I, it like there? Yeah, is it it's just? Not, it's not great. It was youth. Uh, I went to Feltham. It's youth offenders. It's probably worse than. Oh, you said than, really, yeah. yeah. It's worse than actual adults' jails. Same like how it is in school. No, I get it. Um, he's the strongest in the year. Well, there's all these year groups that yeah. haven't actually had the strongest in the year fight. Yeah. So and, and listen, shout out to everybody at Feltham. Shout out to everybody that's uh, doing bang their time. Bang your doors. Yeah, bang the doors, man. Like, you know, it's uh, it's not easy. Shit ain't easy. I was out in four days. But, um, four days weren't easy, but it didn't teach me nothing. It didn't teach you nothing? Nah, I was straight back out here. Talk to me about Buddha. My guy. <laughs> Buddha was like Tupac. Really? He was only five... But like, Tupac wasn't five foot, but he, he was had a bald head, skin-shaved bald head. He had an AK-47 tattooed on his chest. He had Fug Life tattooed on his chest, and he had a sh very short temper. He didn't want to fuck with Buddha. He didn't want to fuck with Buddha. Right. Well, as a, yeah, he was a bit older than us, but yeah, he was a wild person. Um... I used to live he wild person but same same morals. Mm. I I could bring I used to leave my window my bedroom window open and he used to break into all oh, my kitchen window open, it doesn't matter. But he used to break into my house on a morning and cook breakfast for my whole for me, my mum, my girlfriend. Like no way. But, yeah. most days, like um a lot of days he was welcome in my house mm. a lot of the time. He was quite prolific as well, but he was just like I said, I've said it a number of times, rebel with no cause, mm -hmm. like no no real guidance. We was all just guiding each other through life. And yeah, he ended up getting life. What? Yeah. I mean, I won't go into how yeah, he got yeah, life, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's quite graphic. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, some people are dead or in jail. Is he, will he be watching now? I hope so. Yeah, um, big up Buddha. My guy, and I, I used to go visit, I used to take my kids to go visit him in jail when they was like three and four. And I used to be quite pen pally with him, and I, I regret that we stopped mm. speaking how we used to speak. And I'd really like to speak to him right now, but so that's the that's the call out there. There, that's the that's the call. Well, it's up to me. Shout out um, Vod, shout out Pies, mm. shout out Taze. I know you lot got his address. Yeah, make it happen. Yeah, Fuzzy Terminator. We do, oh. and I might just add right now. We do have a list because We've this got a this one, yeah, yeah we, okay. we, we're, we're getting into these, these like more critical regulators. Things. Yeah. Or trying to be regulators, fuzzy mm. and Terminator. This mm -hmm. this story is that Vids made sure that I, I brought these up. Terminator was this security guard who had a chip on his shoulder as well, and he was his mission was to catch us because we were always bad. Hmm. He went to, he went to the gym. He was a few years older than us. He was at he's quite a real a, Terminator. Yeah, yeah. He was on. If he saw us, he'd start running straight away. Without even we yeah. ever we might even not. It's re it's that he knows whatever we're just us being where he is. We're doing bad, so all he has to do is catch us. Um, he might want to catch us for the last thing that we've done to him. He might have mm. like poured a bucket of of something over his head or like <laughs> <laughs> like you pesky vermin. Yeah, yeah, that kind of shit. <laughs> mm. he, he and you didn't want to get caught by him because he had biceps and triceps, and we was like. Little bitty kids. So we're he's, talking about trained folk here, people that worked in the. the he was system. a security officer. Secu like, it wasn't police, but we called him a hero back in the day. Because there was also another guy called Fuzzy. Fuzzy. So you mentioned a, earlier on. He was a yeah. ticket inspector and we terrorised him really? every time we saw him. Right. We turned off the lights. We broke into the back cabin of a train, turned the lights off. And then walked down a carriage. Oh, we got on the mic and said, Fuzzy, we're coming to get you. This is me and Vids. And we come down the train with a fire extinguisher and let him have the Soaked whole him. the whole can. It wasn't a soaking thing, it was a foam one. <laughs> he had glasses and a, and a, and a uh, ticket inspector's hat. And we took the hat off him. <laughs> what, what have you done with the hat? We took Polaroid pictures of it. Like, I don't know where it is now. We're wearing it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a picture of Viz wearing a Polaroid fuzzy hat. 
<laughs> oh my god, Vince, send that picture in for the edit, baby. Because <laughs> this is daily occurrence, like, see, like, yeah, I'm, you shouldn't be proud of certain things, but we might have been putting it on someone, maybe bullying someone on a train. Yeah. Someone thought they could stick up for that person and will stand up and say, hey, leave mm, him alone. Superhero. Hero turned to zero real quick. Really? Imagine getting a pack of 13-year-olds yeah. on you. Like you think you can punch them all up at one time, but when there's yeah. one on your back, one on your leg, one... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One yeah. in your pocket, trying to take your like wallet. Like, yeah, yeah, literally, like a swarm of us. It's like, then you're getting grievously bodily harmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grievously. Yeah, yeah. And it's only when you walk away saying to yourself, "Fuck." Oh, I've got nicked for that shit as well. Have you? Yeah, no, for that particular time as well. Yeah, but I just, I got nicked all the time. Yeah. But NFA was a, was the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, them words there, them three letters really? there, really? that really? acronym there. Yeah, no further action. Bosh. <laughs> I guess that's just, just like a weight off your shoulders. Mm, I mean, it means carry on. Exactly that. Start again. Man, when does it? When do you? F I guess hindsight is, you know, it's a motherfucker, but at the same time, it's it's a lesson learned. How how much of this in karma? How many of tokens do you reckon you hand in? How many times do you say to yourself, "Yeah, maybe I did go a little bit too far there." Good, good, good question. <laughs> it's hard to answer because we went far. Too, we went too far. But how far was too far for you? People getting left for dead. Right. You don't know if if they've ever come back or or there wasn't a murder case out on our truck. But you know when you leave someone's sparko out and there's no one there to help them. Yeah, you might have a little bit of... You might be sitting in your home thinking, shit, I hope he's alive and all that kind of stuff. Does it play in your mind now? No. But it did? Maybe, a little bit. Not not, not, not a lot. Yeah. It's bad. I, f I feel like it's bad, but we feel... We kind of disassociate ourselves from normal living. We don't... I Still to this day, I don't class myself as a civilian. Like, see how, you know too see much. how soldiers will call us civilians? I'm not yeah. that guy. I'm not... Like, I know if we're in carnival or if we're in a, um, he will tell you, but if we're in a, uh, a concert, I could be the last person in that concert. doesn't mean I'm not at the front. If I want to be at the front, I will be at the front. Mm. I know how to manoeuvre through a crowd. I know, like, same like the West, the West End in the mm. city, mm. Uh, like, I'm weaving in, out, out. Mm. Like, I, I, we, I'm a lorry driver now and driving a lorry there's certain skills that you need to have you need to be able to see the road before other people you see what's going to happen before other people see what's going to happen mm -hmm. and you're making your decision on on something like someone's looking at their phone but they're walking in direct diagonal fact you know they're going to cross the road mm. they even look left or right yet but i'm already slowing down my lorry mm. it's like you have a chance to see things before it happens yeah you think that's part of a skill set that you may have developed through the time in? Uh, I guess so, because everything's happening so fast. Mm. Uh, it's life and death when you're out there. If you've mm. ever got a train running past your face like that... Like uh, what? They're like that to your, nose, your nose? Yeah, and you can feel the force of the train pulling you towards it, but your back's against the wall. Like Oh, fuck that. <laughs> you know when they say your life... Shot, um, like flashes before you, yeah. Like that happened on a daily thingy, daily occurrence. Big up band, my guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, hold on. Fucking hell. Big up band. Like that's somebody. I'm saying, he's one of my top of tops. I Bro, love. I, we were really around. good pals back in the day. Yeah, band and man. I haven't seen him for twenty years, but he knows. Big up my guy band. And you know how he surfaces. Like, He'll do something. Just I remember I was walking just down from. Um, uh, from Latimer Road. And I said, I said, band dub. I'm like, my guy, I ain't seen none of them for a long time. And it was just, just wicked. It was just like that, that kind of threw me back to a wicked time. Yeah, he's old school. Even meeting he's in proper, big up band, good yeah. peoples. No, yeah. He's really good, really good peoples. Band, Blink, 
Yeah, like I said, there's there's certain people that I really clicked with. It didn't matter if they was associated. So band ended up being DDS. Mm-hmm. I think even Blink might have even got into or, or Scott Free or whatever, but mm-hmm. that didn't matter to me. Mm. Yeah, we was on the come up. We was in the trenches together. Mm. I was there when you like when Cos Take they like Cos has always had a name. Take's always had a name, but I I was there from the the beginnings. Mm. Back in the day, I'm talking early days, like in Clapper Junction, there was like this guy called Gear, a guy called Rogue. Um, they were quite prolific. Mm. There was, there's a number of people that just, Seven Up, Esno. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh my God, yeah, Seven Up. Right? There was people Big that, up Esno. Right? Ooh, Esno, I bought name. my first pair of uh, turntables from Esno. Mm. Then fucking Ariston. Mm. I don't know if you remember the brand, yeah, yeah, but they yeah, used yeah. to make washing machines. Yeah. No, they, right. it, the belt drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly that. You gotta scratch right. that shit. <laughs> I bought my first set of decks from Esno, and then one day Vids turned up from a house party with a Technic 1210. Mm. He couldn't get two. Like the party, something happened to the party, and he was like, oh, Dane wants a fucking deck. Mm. And he just took it off. Well, just took it. Yeah. That's what we did. Like, if we wanted something, we took it. And no regrets, none? No, I mean... We're too young. Well, yeah, but it's also, also anti-establishmentarianism. Ooh. Oh, I broke that out. Oh, I, didn't, I wasn't expecting to get that. Do you know what I mean? Get that down on the dot. We were against the system because we don't believe in what... We're not conforming to, to their ways. It was all... We, we saw mm. how wrong it was it was like it's just the mundane life is not for yeah. us and yeah, 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 I suppose yeah. we was because of the lifestyle we lived we had a window to it whereas with just getting a job and going to that shit's boring I mean no offence to people that are going out and doing a working hard and all that I mean I've got yeah, a job yeah we will do I, yeah, I've got we'll a job do. but can't lie it's fucking boring <laughs> tell the story because yeah while we're on this anti-establishment tip Tell the story of, of brew raising because there is certainly an art and we're not endorsing this at all. You know, we're talking now pre, you know, cameras where... No, there was cameras. Was every... Oh, no, 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 that's all right. Yeah, we're talking, we're talking pre-cameras here. So we're talking don't try this shit. But, but for sure, like, this was a real culture in itself and, and you were telling story, a story before we jumped on of... So of... things have changed nowadays. A lot of people buy their paint. That was unheard of. Back in the day, you would be shunned upon if you did. You'd probably get robbed for the paint that you bought if you if you said, oh, I bought these tins or whatever, yeah? Mm. So we went out stealing. Mm. That was our day-to-day thing. Still paint, still paint. But then you realise that there's other things that you can steal, mm. that paint that was easier than paint. And same like a brew can, as a can of beer, was about the same size of a, as a spray can. And we was quite... Uh, nifty, let's say, yeah? with our five finger dis- <laughs> five finger discounts, we could slip just with this middle finger alone. Don't know slip, what you mean. Don't know slip what you a mean. whole can up the sleeve, and right. the, the guy could be standing right next to us. But we pulled the next can out and I'll ask how much it cost, and he wouldn't have seen. It was sleight of hand, literally. So as you're going into, for instance, a fridge, you put your hand in, but your your hand is in your sleeve. So as soon as you put your hand in, you've grasped the can, but but you just put your sleeve on top of it and carry on. It's like you've... you've and suck up the Yeah, can you suck up the first can and you grab... It looks like you're having a struggle trying to get the can. You Darn might eat your fucking heart out. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you kind of have to pretend that you're drunk already, that it was a struggle to you to get the can, but really, it was like... Really? Sometimes you might get one or two and they still go, oh, how much is this? Really? And they say the price and you say, oh... oh I'll leave it. I don't want that then. Yeah, it's yeah. all right. <laughs> Sounds a bit too uh, expensive. Yeah. These wow. times you've got two up this sleeve, two on that sleeve. No one's ever uh, 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 expressed how that actually plays out before. That's an interesting notion that you just... It, well, you have to have a particular sized sleeve or something? Like yeah, that. yeah. You have to get some sort of elastic stuff. But that oh, stuff... Goodness. Timberland jackets. Yeah. Now, how do we get the Timberland jackets? Probably we raised them as well. We line up at Selfridges, four or five guys, walk in one at a time, go to the Timberland section, or we go to Timberland, do the same thing, put on a jacket, and leave the store. Just like that? Well, by the time the fourth person done it, 
you'd be wait there'd be three guys waiting at the end of a road with Timberland jackets on, brand new Timberland jackets, and you'll see the fourth guy running with security guards behind him, and that's when you knew to leave. Oh my god. I have a misspent youth, me. I don't fucking like it's, it's just crazy that I mean, of course, like nowadays there's just There's a way around everything. Mm. Everything. This is how people become millionaires, or they find a loophole, or mm. they find this is how you just just find a little one up on someone that they haven't clocked this yet. South is a fucking all the place. Like South is full on. We were had friends in North. We had friends in West. We had friends in East, mm. and we would go to these areas, not worrying about. Postcode wars. Like we're yeah. trying to get up in every postcode that, that's known to man, and our mate might live in North, so we just all go up there, mob handed or whatever. Mm. And if something happened there, then something happened. Mm. Something's likely to happen at any point throughout the day. Mm. We was not paying for anything. We might have money in our pocket. Might have quite a bit of money in our pocket mm. because we was selling a lot of the stuff that we were stealing, to, so we could just buy weed and mm. just so we could. We wanted to buy designer clothes, but then we realised that we could steal them as well. Mm. <laughs> so we'd steal them and sell them and, yeah, we just... We didn't want for money. Or we didn't need for money because we knew how... To get to obtain it otherwise. Obtain it, yeah. And then we realised... We was trying to get money just so we could buy weed and then we, we realised, hang on a minute. Mm. Or designer clothes. Then we, we could steal everything that we wanted. In retrospect... 2022, we're, it's 2022 and we're, any regrets, anything that you could say to yourself, you know, well, you know, I didn't really expect this to happen or I didn't expect something, because <clears throat> you, you, you say you say No regrets. None. Zero. If anything, I wish I'd done more. I wish I'd done more. I'm going to be I, real with you. That's what everyone fucking says. You, it doesn't leave you. Does not leave you. This, like I said, I'm not a civilian. It, it won't, I see. I see. I, I look at like I feel like Neo in a Matrix. Mm. And that sounds quite cheesy. Yeah, and big but up I Gusto because Gusto, uh, he he said something very similar. He said he felt like the moment he gets a whiff of graph again, he's he's not even in this world. He's in he's invisible in plain sight. <laughs> It's true, isn't it? Literally, yeah. Um, big up Char again. Oh, like he's, he used to do boxes and go and take pictures of them in the daytime. But he'd just walk off the tracks with a higher vis on and walk up to the tracky hut. There'd be trackies in there having cups of tea and that, you know, working. He was like, oh, I'm just taking a picture for British Transport Police. What? <laughs> he, so you get, like, at night when you've done your dub, you get a shit picture. Mm. No, a child would walk off the tracks daylight and get the clearest day picture, not from a moving train. He would walk, and there'll be trackies in the yard, in in the actual hut that he's just dubbed on the night before or mm. pieced, and he'd be like, I'm just taking a picture for the police. And they're like, yeah, crack on, mate. Wow. <laughs> Life. Life in the 90s, ladies and gentlemen, is personified as by the man like Dane. Honestly, it's been a fucking pleasure having you here, brother. Yeah, it's been great to be here. I've been waiting to get some of this shit off my shoulders for yeah. for days, for months, for years. I've got days, months and years more mm. stories, but they're just all... Calcified. Com Compartmentalised. Compartmentalised. Mm, maybe, yeah, some things are trauma, some things aren't, but yeah. uh, it's all part and parcel of what made me who I am. Hell yeah. Mm. And I'm really pleased you, you got an opportunity to air it on... Well, yeah, I'll thank you for that opportunity. And my guy, what's his name? Oxo. Yeah. Oxo, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. He's the one that made this happen. Yeah. Can't lie. Big, Big up Oxo. Up. Big up Oxo. I've never even met the guy still. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy how that happened. Um, anyone you want to shout out? Any shout outs? <coughs> Baza, RIP. Big up my son, Kieran. Big up my son, Kane. Big up both my daughters. Because family first. Shout out to my mum. Mm-hmm. Um, big up for you, right? Because he's... And Nams as well, yeah? So he won't let me fucking... 
I haven't been down for this. Uh, big up vids, RIP sum, RIP sicko. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have been a dad for the first time. Um, big up Avon, mm. big up feds, mm. big up pies, Buddha, char, take, cos. Uh, and that will do for now. Mm. I think there's, mm. there's loads more. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's Killer Killer Podcast for another week. You know what we do. All right, sharing is caring. Don't, don't be doing nothing without sharing it and tell a friend to tell a friend, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Big up Dave again. Old gang, tight, gang, gang. Old tight, Ben. So you stay lucky, people. Be lucky. Peace. <laughs> I've actually done a killer <laughs> podcast. <laughs>